everybody, it's Mel from Everything Marmy. Welcome back to part three of building a junk journal out of a little golden book. And so far what we've got now is this little cover here. That's the outside. That's the inside. And I did double up my material simply because it was a lot more see-through than um, I expected it to be. So I did put a second coating on it. Um, you can choose to do that or not. You're really not going to see that with a tassel. Sorry about the glare here, folks. I can see it coming in through the window, but um, let me just try to angle it so you're not getting it. There we go. Oh, you're still going to get a little bit. Okay, so I'll come over here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to let that sit up there for a, w a little bit. And we're going to take this piece of paper now. The one that we kept back from when we did the inside of the cover this part here and we are going to take our little book block which is i use the inside of a reader's digest book and i'm going to mark some holes on it now i know that this and this are the exact same size and I'm going to fold it in half to get the center. Approximately. I don't always do this, folks. I'm just doing this because I'm on camera. But I want to mark the top, top, and the bottom, bottom. And this is important because our holes are going to be different from the top to the bottom. Um, I don't always do things exactly even, so... When I'm doing my signatures here, and I put this in here, I want to make sure that I'm getting at least the lowest part of the paper here, which in this case is this little funky one here that we've cut. Okay, and I've decided to move it right down to the bottom. So I want to put three holes somewhere that look like that and of course you just saw me do it with a pencil and it's not even so that is the center um, signature now this is the first one so I want to move over a little bit and do that and I want to move over and do another one and all together that should be less than one and a half inches and it is it's just barely one and a half inches so then I want to put this on here, like this, and I want to take my tool, my pokey tool, let me just clear this stuff out of the way, move you a little bit closer. As you can see, I've got three holes, so nine all together. I want to match it to the spine of my book on this book block. And I'm going to take off this little protector cover. Now, like I said, if you don't have one of these tools, maybe you have a protractor or a corkscrew um, with a wooden handle that looks like this. This is a really good tool here, folks. Really good. In fact, I'll show you. Um, because you can just simply twist it and the big thing is is I want to make sure it's in the middle of this signature block so I want to fold up there and make sure that they're all in the middle and in fact I think they're too far apart so I'm going to bring these two a little closer And as you can see, I don't measure. So I'm just gonna take my center and use this and give it a good twist. And I can feel it going right down to the book block. And I always start with the center. 
Give it a good twist. I can feel it down at the center and holding it right through the hole I've just made. I want to make sure I start up there as well. In fact, I like, to be honest, I like the corkscrew a lot better than I like my pokey tool because I got the handle here that's a lot better for me. But when I turn it over, I'm going to find that I need to poke the holes in through the other side as well. That helps guide the needle a little bit better. And I'm just going down now and just marking my holes into the book spine that we created. So you see, folks, not everything designed for book building is actually as good as something like, say, this corkscrew. Okay, so very faintly, you can see now the holes that I've put in there, especially in the middle. So now I want to go to the other side and I want to use my tool and I want to find those holes and poke through them. making sure. Because I want to punch back the other way too. And like I said, I put two pieces of material on the outside of mine, so. And I want to be careful that I'm not going to rip off the book block or the, pardon me, the spine. So now that I've poked the holes through, you can clearly see them here. Now I want to poke through the other way. And I just hold it up and push it down. Now I'm going to use a book block for these ones here. I want to make sure these center ones are rather large because especially I'm going to be using a stitch that comes up through the center. So I just want to kind of do a wider circle. I'm going to flip that over and do those a little bit wider. Just so I know it'll fit through because two threads have to go through that middle hole. Especially when you're putting material on the spine of the book, it's really important to see where these holes are so that you can guide your needle. Okay, where did I put the little plastic doodad? Here it is. I always like to cover up my sharp things with the original cover. Okay, so now I'm gonna find, oh, before I begin that, so we've marked the spine of our book and it doesn't matter if it looks pretty or doesn't look pretty because it's all gonna be covered up. Now I want to take the same thing and I want to go through and mark all the signatures with that middle area. So I'm just going to take it and now where the holes are already po poked through here, I'm just going to poke through and that's why we have this top, middle and bottom one poked. I'm just going to make sure that is more in the center. Okay. Because I want to fold it over to be able to see it. And this is why I wanted to know whether it was top or bottom. So I can take my pencil and just put a little hole or a little marking with my pencil 
right where those holes are. And I'm going to do that with all three. Make a little X. So that when I go and do them, I don't have to stop and start with every single one. And this is why it's important that you know <clears throat> what is the top and what is the bottom so that all of them are, are done right. Okay, now I'm just going to make sure, always measure twice and then Check your books, making sure they're in order. So this is the first, the second, and the third. I'm just going to check them and make sure that the holes are where they need to be. And that they're clear so I don't have to guess. That's perfect. And that was book one. This is book two. This is probably the most important step. That's book two and book three. Again, I'm looking to see top and bottom. Oh, I was off on this one. That one was right and that one was right. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and punch holes in this as well, which is why I don't know why I put the thing on it, but so that was book three. Let's start with book one. I want to puncture these papers and get the hole in. All the way down. Making sure it's all the way down through the crease. And again, I want to turn it over. I want to make sure it hit that crease and come up again. Sometimes it's very easy to miss the crease. I've done that. I've done it here. I've done it many times actually because papers will shift inside of these little clips. Okay. I just want to make sure that one's coming out through the center a little bit better. Like I said, it's important that we have a good hole in the center. So the first one is done. Let's start with the center. here. Make sure it's coming out through the crease. And the more you do this, the more you'll find it comforting that you know how to do it. So if you make a boo-boo, you can either redo it. These papers will take quite a beating. You could just put some book tape on it um, and then re-punch the holes. You could even use masking tape because that's a paper product too and it's much, much cheaper. So that's 
number two and number three. And we're gonna be sewing them in from the third to the second to the first. And I did figure out how many papers, folks. Altogether, I have 40 papers, or 30 papers, so altogether that is, um, times four is 120. So there's a lot in this little golden book. And um, certainly half of that would be more than sufficient, especially if you plan on adding to it as you, you go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, waxed thread and I am going to lay down my book here. Find my little tool. I like to clean up as I go, otherwise I'll lose things. I wanna make sure I have scissors handy my whatever I choose to sew with. I've got some needles. I don't need this tool anymore. I don't need the corkscrew anymore or the paper block. Okay, so this one, like I said, is the third book and we're going to sew in the third book first so i'm going to move those over and we're going to start from left go to the middle and then go to the right so what i want to do is i want to take my thread and i want to make them all even so i want to make sure that this i leave about a good inch and a half at the top i bring it down back to the top and down again Okay, so an inch and a half, then I follow the length of the book three times and I cut. And once I've cut it, I can just use this piece of the cut material to go ahead and just pull from my threads. I don't have to keep measuring the book. And this is so I'm giving it plenty of room for charms at the bottom. I happen to like charms at the bottom. So I'm going to cut that there, and then I'm just going to turn it around and cut the third one. And your needle, when you're looking for needle for your thread, make sure the needle is big enough and your thread is thick enough to hold however many papers you've got going in your book. Okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm gonna put two of the strands up here. I'm gonna pick a needle, and I'll show you the size that I tend to use. I tend to use a needle about that thick. So there's my finger here. So it's very big. Now you don't have to. People have used uh, normal sized needles. Your needles just comparative to how thick your strands are on your thread. And I'm gonna show you this very easily. Once I thread it through the needle, I just pull it through a little bit. I have all of this left behind, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke my hole, my, my needle through the center hole like that. Okay, and then I'm going to pick up my book and I'm going to go into the far left center hole like that. And I'm going to pull the needle through, but I'm going to leave about that much thread hanging down. Okay, and then I'm going to go into the bottom hole, making sure that I'm not getting caught up on any of the hooks. And I'm just going to go through that hole first, pull it through, 
and then I'm going to thread it through my book to the papers, just like so. Now, don't worry if you're not getting it the first time, folks. I've got three more to put in. So then, once I come through the bottom, I want to hold this middle part tight and down. And I actually want to give it a little bit more. So I'm going to pull on the center one a little bit more because I want it a little bit more dangly. I'm going to make sure that's tight. And I'm going to go through the top part. Again, trying not to get caught up on those little clips at the top. I'm going to go through the paper holes. And I'm going to go through the journal hole in the spine. And I'm going to make sure at this point now that it's nice and snug against the spine. Okay, you see? So because mine is wax thread, I'm not too worried. Then I'm going to go back into the center hole, come up. I'm going to look through the hole here, make sure it's coming through there. And when it comes up, I want to make sure I get it into that center hole again. And I might need to use my hard surface to poke it down just so I can grab the needle. And I want to go on the other side of the string. So I've got one string on this side. I want the needle to come up on this side. Then I'm just going to wiggle that needle. Pull this really tightly. I'm going to let the needle loosen the thread that had held it before. I'm going to make sure it's all real tight. And I'm going to tie it three times. One, two, and three. And that way I've got threads coming down so if I want to add charms, I can. And now I can remove these clips. And as you can see, that first signature is in there. Okay, now we're going to do the middle one. So I need to thread my needle again. And the great thing about a video is that you can pause it and rewind as much as you want. So again, I've pulled it through the needle. I want to take my second signature and this one is going through the middle. So I start with the middle. I work my needle through that hole. And now I'm going to the center hole here in my spine. Okay, and you can see the needle coming up there. So I pull on it, jiggling it a little bit just to get it through the material. And remember, I want to leave some material at just a dangle like that. I go down to the bottom, put my needle in, making sure my needle is in first before I thread it through the papers. I should be able to see the holes this way. I put the needle in through the papers and I give it a tug. Now, of course, don't tug too hard because this part here, we wanna make sure we have enough thread at the bottom, so I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room. I'm going to come up to the top hole, and you see me twisting the book a lot because I find that's a lot easier for me. I poke my nail through the top hole, I go through the top hole in the, the spine, and I feed the needle through it. Okay. Now at this point, I wanna check and make sure that these strings are tight. 
right here. Okay, and I do that by I'm holding on to the center string in here. And then again, I want to go through the center. And I want to make sure that I'm coming up. So I come through with the needle first. Because I can always tighten it once it comes up. And that's why I said the looser the holes, you might have to use your hard surface here in the center. Sometimes you gotta watch that you, you don't miss a few pages, I almost did there, and come up through the center. And again, I wanna make sure that this is completely tight. Okay. I can remove the needle out of there now, and I'm gonna tie three knots, making sure that they're snug in there. One, two, and three. Now I can let those down. And remove these clips. So now we've got the second signature in. So there are two signatures. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long to sew them in. You're gonna be a pro in no time whatsoever. We've got one signature there, and we've got the third signature that starts there. This is why I like having these pages separating it. And now we're gonna work on the final one. So again, I put that into place. I make sure it's lined up properly, making sure the picture is in the right space. I've done that before too, sewn upside down. I'm going to thread my needle again. And I apologize if this seems a bit redundant. You can fast forward this if you don't need this extra, but sometimes people do. Again, I'm going to go through the center of the signature. I'm going to go through the center hole in the spine, push it through. Leave some of that hanging down. Go through the bottom. So it's center, bottom, all the way to the top and back to center. You do that three times. And that's why it's important to have that center hole completely as wide as possible. But not too wide that your needle will fall through it. Okay, and then I'm going through the top, through the top of the hole on the spine. Out it comes. And I wanna hang on to this to make sure it's tight and I wanna pull on the string Okay, and then I want to go back into that center hole. And the important part about the center hole is that you come up with your needle on the opposite side of the string, which takes some getting used to, but you'll get used to it in no time. So your string needs to be underneath the line like that. So here's your string, here's the line, 
and the needle comes up like that. And then making sure the second thread comes through and we want to tighten it to make sure these are not going to go anywhere. You want a little bit of give, but you don't want too much because you want to build on this book. And out comes the needle for the last time. I'm just going to put the needle away. And I'm going to tie it three times across that string that we've put in the middle, which is why it's important that that string is there. One. Two. And three. Now we can take the clips off. And there we go. We have our book all stitched in. And you can see from the top, it's not perfectly lined up, folks. But that's okay. That is completely okay. Because once you start working in it, she'll mold any way you want. It doesn't really matter that she's perfect or not. But as she stands right now, you have a junk journal that you've just made. And that's it, folks. Um, let me know if you want a part four. And the part four will be on making a tassel, a closure, and putting beads on the bottom. All right. Remember, we're perfectly imperfect. Love one it needed. I really hope you enjoyed part three, and I will see you next time. I love you all. Bye for now.